Oh, you're a son, isn't he, Mr. Well, it's just as well. I didn't look forward to seeing him with any pleasure under the circumstances. As a matter of fact, I'm glad to be able to talk to you directly and frankly. You see, I know what's been going on here. Of course, you don't think me worthy of your son. You're right, I'm not. No. No woman is worthy of a man's love who's willing to let him ruin himself for her, as you're doing. I don't know what you've heard, but it isn't true. Armo has told me himself that he wants to take his modest fortune out of my hands at once. The reason is obvious, isn't it? Can you deny he wants the money for you? Whatever the reason, I hope you won't let him have it, monsieur. I wish I could believe you are sincere. A few years ago, I lived on bread and soup. I can manage very well without taking anything from Armand. I still say what I came here to say. This thing must end at once. You might as well save your breath, monsieur. How long have you known Armand, madame? Three months and 12 days, monsieur. Three months and 12 days. And how long do you expect this thing to last? Oh, you've never known love to last, monsieur. Never, when it was unsanctified by marriage, unblessed by children or social ties. I shall love Armand always. And I believe he shall love me always, too. Always? Huh? Always. Hasn't your own experience taught you the human heart can't be trusted? I think I know my own heart better than you can, monsieur. And I can trust it not to change. No woman, unprotected as you are, can afford to give the best years of her life to a man who, when he leaves her, will leave her with nothing, and who is certain to leave her in the end. I don't suppose you can understand how any woman, unprotected as you say I am, can be lifted above self-interest by a sentiment so delicate and pure that she feels only humiliation when you speak of such things. I realize now that you do love him, unselfishly. But even so, I say, it can't go on. But it will go on. Armand is a young man with his way to make, with a career waiting for him. And in his case, he can't serve his best interests by being tied to a woman he can't present to his family or his friends. Armand is no different than other men. Oh, come, madame. Be honest. Haven't you found him different? Haven't you found him more sensitive, more loyal? Or, or am I prejudiced because I am his father? No. No, no, Armand is different. And so, you see, as long as Armand loves you, he'll not enter rooms that you can't. But a man can go back. He can always go back. Monsieur, suppose I told you I have the feeling I shan't live very long. Well, then I'd scold you for being fanciful and a little foolish. What you probably feel is the melancholy of happiness, that mood that comes over all of us when we realize that even love can't remain at flood tide forever. But all our are doomed. With him, you're both doomed. Without a profession of any sort, what can he do? Unless he sinks so low, he's willing to let some other man foot the bills for his life with you. You don't know Armand. You wouldn't say that. No one knows the man he might become if he loses his self-respect. But I think that's too high a price to pay even for love. I want Armand to enjoy life, not to be sacrificed to it. You see, my son is as dear to me as he possibly can be to you. Yes, but you have others who are dear to you. I have only Armand. You don't know how I've changed. And he taught me that love is not always selfish, no goodness dull, no man faithless. No, no, you can't expect me to give up such love as his. Think what's best for him. Think what you'd want for him if he were your own son. Then think how you're killing his right to a normal life. Try to realize that everything you're ashamed of in your own past would only taint his future. You tell me that you love him. I believe you. That's why I'm able to stand here, a man who's getting old, and ask this great sacrifice of you, as humbly as I'd ask a great favor of a queen. 
I can give you nothing in return except my thanks and my respect. Please give him up. What shall I do? Talk to him, to t tell him he must leave you. I have talked. Leave him. He'd follow me. Tell him you don't love him. He wouldn't believe me. No. I know only one way. But I shan't tell you what it is. Oh. I knew I was too happy. What are you going to do? Don't let yourself think of that. I'll send him back to you tonight. How can I ever repay you for all you're doing for me? Make no mistake, monsieur. Whatever I do, it's nothing for you. It's all for Armand. I thank you just the same. And I shall never forget what I and my family owe you. Goodbye, monsieur. Don't reproach yourself. You've done only what Armand's father should have done. Only don't let him know it. He might hate you. And I don't want that to happen. Because he shall need all the courage and comfort you can give him. For a long time, I think. God bless you, Margaret Gautier. 